You have one death to give. Let's get frank about it. If you have somebody you'd like me to pray for, please make sure to leave their name down in the comments section. I'll be happy to lift them up in my daily prayers. But also, too, if you want to talk about this topic of death, like it's something going on in your life, etc., I invite you to leave a comment down below also. That way we can have a conversation about it. Thank you. Well, as I started this video with, I mentioned that we all have one death to give, which is a very famous line from St. Teresa of Avila. And, you know, this sort of first Sunday in Lent where we hear about Jesus' big confrontation with the devil, you know, my mind just kept going to the topic of death, particularly with everything that's been going on. And I happened to find myself in our Carmelite cemetery here and this was one of my biggest burdens in the relationship to my becoming a Carmelite one of the biggest I guess obstacles roadblocks etc whatever sort of word you want to put with it why is that because I had to confront the reality that I myself am going to be buried here in this plot away from my ancestors away from my family away from everybody I care about this is going to be my place in Middletown New York and that was not always the easiest thing for me to deal with. And I remember going through ever so uh, humbly, I'm kind of a bull in a china shop at time, but uh, when I was being interviewed for Solemn Profession, which says I'm going to be a Carmelite and live poverty, chastity, obedience for the rest of my life, uh, I was talking with one of the professed members, a very wise man, um, a great teacher in the order, and etc. And I mentioned this, he asked me, you know, what's your biggest fear you have going on in your heart right now? And I mentioned, I'm like, you know, being buried up in Middletown away from my family. Um, one of the few religious practices I guess I could say that my family had while I was growing up was, you know, every year going to the family plots and paying respect to the family members and, and uh, trying to plant flowers and make their, their places of, uh, you know, remission into the eternal life here beautiful. And uh, knowing that, you know, I'm going to be away from all that and away from my family was, was really weighing on me. And he just sort of looked at me in a very prudent way and he said, Nick, that's a good insight. I'm like, well, what do you mean, bud? He said, you're ending a new relationship with the Order and it's a relationship of eternity. You'll be connected with us and those brothers, etc., until the unending day, so it'll never come. And realizing that death is sort of the linchpin that brings in that reality reminds you that, you know, relationships don't necessarily end at death. And that's an important insight I wanted to offer us as we journey through this season of Lent, that death is an end in one way, but it's also a transformation in another. That when we die, you know, our relationships with our loved ones don't necessarily end. They are transformed. Sure, we don't see them the same way. And we might forget smells and how voices sound and, and what was their touch like and the gentle look in their eyes and, and um, all the beauty that goes into relationship that we have with our loved ones. But, you know, those relationships are for eternity because we are all the people of God. And, and death is one of those things that really wakes us up to the reality of who it is that we want to be connected to, who it is we want to be related to, who is it that we want to have our associations with, not just for now, but for all eternity. And that's one of the gifts of baptism, because when we talk about baptism in the church and this sort of, you know, going down in the wild as of death and coming up a new life, we are placing ourselves in the body of Christ. And all of these other Christians, all the baptized, we will now be associated with, connected with, related with for all eternity. So even though death in a way is an end, you know, our body dies, there is the resurrection. And, you know, death is never an easy topic to talk about, but I just wanted to present you all with this idea of relationship. That as we go through this life, and, and that's why when we cultivate friendships is of the utmost importance, because how do we want to live in connectedness with the other person, you know, and etc. That death, as we reflect about death, it also causes us to think about the life that we are living now. Who are we as people? Who is it that I hang out with? Who's my family? Who am I called to be in this life? And et cetera. And these are all big questions and I can't give the answer to you because they're personable questions. And as you can tell, the sun is starting to get over a tree and shine right on my face. So I'll take that as a sign from the Lord above that maybe we should bring this to an end. But I just wanted to present this all to you on sort of the first Sunday of Lent this year in 2018 that, you know, as we are called to sort of die to oneself, you know, we must deny ourselves pick up our cross and follow Christ. It's an invitation to also reflect on the life in which we are living. Because death only means something because we had a life to live, as Jesus shows us, and he offers us a new life also. Death is not easy, nor should these conversations be held lightly. But they need to be held. They need to be talked about. We need to learn from each other. 
we need to confront this re reality instead of running away from it, particularly now in these challenging times of everything that's been happening. So I thank you very much for your time, my brothers and sisters today. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. And may God continue to bless you in all that you're doing. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Don't forget, if you like today's video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. It really does help me. Thank you again. Thank mm -hmm. you.